Okay, so um, we're going to do a couple of problems here um, involving friction. Okay, and I'm going to start with uh, kinetic friction. Um, uh, we're going to do, I'm going to draw a picture of a problem that we're going to do. This was a problem that we'll look at first. This is a relatively simple problem, and we're going to solve the problem of a piece of wood sliding on ice. Okay, I don't know why anyone would care about the kinetic frictional force between wood and ice. Oh, skis. Okay, so here's what we do is we have a mass of mass M. We'll give that maybe, let's give mass M be equal to, say, 10 kilograms. Okay, and we're going to give it an initial velocity. So this is a, I don't know, piece of wood, and it's been pushed and it's been given an initial velocity. But we're going to give it a velocity of uh, maybe 5 meters per second. Okay, and the question is, um, the question that we're going to ask is, how um, far does this, this piece of wood go before it comes to rest? Okay, now um, we're going to do this with F equals MA. And what we'll have to do then is we have to draw a, uh, a free body diagram because we're going to use our dynamics equation, F equals MA, to solve this problem. So the first thing we do is we draw a free body diagram. So let's do our free body diagram. I'm going to do it right here. This is the mass M. And I have, uh, I have to do the forces now. Now we know that there's a force of gravity on the block. We know that there is a normal force on the block and in this case we've involved friction. This is the first time we've done this in any of our problems and the frictional force is the kinetic frictional force because this mass is touching the ice and there's relative motion between the two surfaces. Okay, And that means that kinetic friction is acting in this, uh, in this case and what we'll do is we'll specify that the coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to 0.5. Okay, these are uh, values that you can look up in books, and I think this is actually in the table on your um, uh, in your book. There's a tabulation of a few material to material. Um, the coefficients of uh, kinetic friction are always between two different or like materials. There's always two materials that are specified whenever you do a coefficient of kinetic or static friction. So now I, what I'm going to do is finish my free body diagram. My free body diagram says that I have a force of kinetic friction and the direction of the force of kinetic friction is in the opposite direction of the motion. If I'm going in the plus x direction, let this be my x-axis here, then that means that I have a force of kinetic friction and it's in the opposite, it's pointing in the minus x direction, the minus i direction. Okay. And I know now that I'm going to write these vectors in terms of uh, their Cartesian unit vector notation in order for us to be able to uh, sum our forces and uh, set equal to MA. So I'm going to write this as N is equal to some magnitude of N and it's in the plus J direction. Force of gravity I know is equal to magnitude of mg, so it's going to be 10, and I'll put the numbers in at the end, but it's going to be mg, and that's in the minus j direction. And now I'm going to put in the, the uh, force, and I, usually we do this as a small, uh, small f. The frictional force, kinetic frictional force, is going to be in the minus j direction, and the magnitude is equal to mu k times the magnitude of the normal force. That's in the minus i direction. Okay, So now what I can do is I can sum my forces and what I get is I get my net force is equal to n minus mg in the j direction. Okay, so I'm kind of writing this backwards. I like to keep the I and J components in the proper order. So let's do the I component first. This is minus mu K magnitude of N in the I direct, minus I direction, uh, plus N 
minus mg in the j direction, positive j direction. Well, it's positive for n and it's negative for mg. Okay, this we will set equal to ma. And once we do that, then we can say immediately, we can say, equating both sides of the equation, that mu k magnitude of, of the n vector, which I'm just going to call n, I'll call it capital N, is equal to m times ax and uh, n minus mg is equal to m a y. Okay, so this is the uh, this, these are our dynamics equation in the x and the y direction. Uh, and so now what we do is we apply our knowledge of the acceleration. And our knowledge of the acceleration is it's not accelerating in the y direction. It's neither going up nor down. And so I can immediately set this equal to zero. Okay, and then that gives me that m, n, the magnitude of n is equal to mg. That's the result of me summing the forces in the y direction and setting them equal to the mass times acceleration in the y direction. Okay. Now, I also have that Ax, which is the acceleration of the, just the whole acceleration, magnitude of the acceleration of this mass, is going to be equal to minus mu k n over um, m. Okay, but we know what n is. It's equal to mg, so this becomes minus mu k g. Okay, that's the that that is the acceleration that this object is undergoing. Well, I mean I can write this as 0.5 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And I get that the acceleration is equal to 4.9 meters per second squared. Okay, so once we have that, this is a constant acceleration. And once we have that, now we can use our kinematic equations of motion to find out how far the sled went. And of course, what I would do here is I would simply give, uh, I'd simply use the formula that V squared minus v naught squared is equal to 2a times the distance that the acceleration was acting. Uh, we know that the final velocity is zero. That's what we want to, we were asking how far did it go, uh, to, how far did it go before it came to a halt. That would be zero. This would be five meters per second, five meters per second squared. That would be 25 meters squared per second squared. And then I have 2 times A, which is going to give me 9.8 meters per second squared times delta X. And so delta X is, we can calculate, it's going to be about 10 divided into 25. It's going to be about 2.5 meters. It's going to, so it's going to be like 2.47 meters is how far it went. Let me see how close I actually got on that. Uh, let's see, 25 divided by 9.8, uh, 2.55. I went the wrong direction. I didn't divide by 10. I divided by something smaller, so I should have made this 2.55. Okay, so that's how we do a simple problem using kinetic friction. And I want to tell you the two things here that are the takeaways. One is that the magnitude of the kinetic friction is given and the direction we get off of the free body diagram so we know the kinetic friction in terms of its plane polar coordinates and we have to convert that to Cartesian unit vector notation. Okay, um, so um, now what we're going to do is we'll do, I'll do another video. We're going to look at um, kinetic friction on a ramp.